Hello and welcome to another edition of Rock's Garage. I'm your host Kevin. On this episode, we're going to be installing a 6 inch drop spindle lift kit, part number LIFT109 on this 2010 Club Car DS. Now before we get started, we want to show you what's included with your lift kit, as well as all of the tools necessary to perform the installation. Now here are the contents that are included with your lift kit. First we have replacement driver and passenger side spindles, two rear lift blocks, two mounting plates, two centering plates, a camber block, and all of the necessary mounting hardware. Now that we've shown you what's included with your lift kit, let's take a look at the tools necessary to perform the installation. Now the tools required to perform the installation are as follows. First up, we have a flathead screwdriver, followed by a ratchet, 7 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths, 5 eighths, and 3 quarter inch sockets, 18 millimeter, 19 millimeter, and 21 millimeter sockets, a 9 sixteenths and 5 eighths inch wrench, a 10 millimeter, 17 millimeter, and 19 millimeter wrench, a tie rod separator, a tape measure, hammer, grease gun, and lastly, a cordless impact. Now that we've shown you all the tools necessary, we're gonna go ahead and begin our installation. Now our first step is to jack our cart up and place it on jack stands. However, before we do this, we wanna make sure we follow all the necessary safety precautions. First thing we wanna do is make sure we have some blocks behind our rear tires to chalk them so that they don't roll when the cart is lifted up. You also wanna make sure that your key is turned off and your parking brake is engaged. And if you're working with an electric cart, make sure your tow run switch is in the tow position. Now that we've gone over all the safety precautions, we're ready to go ahead and jack our cart up and get it on jack stands. Our next step is to remove our factory wheels and tires. Once we have them removed, we can go ahead and discard the wheels and tires as they will not be able to go back on after the lift kit has been installed. The next step in the installation process is to remove the hub from our spindle. Now in order to do this, we need to remove the dust cap, followed by the nut that secures the hub to the spindle. Once removed, we're going to want to retain the stock hub as well as all of the mounting hardware as it will be reinstalled later in the process. Once the front hub has been removed, the next thing we need to do is to remove all of the hardware that secures our spindle to our front axle as well as to our tie rod end. Once all of the hardware has been removed, we can remove and discard the factory spindle. Once you have the spindle removed, the next thing we need to do is to remove the nut that secures the clevis and kingpin to the factory spindle. Once the nut has been removed, the kingpin will slide out from inside of the factory spindle. This will allow us to install our clevis and kingpin onto our new spindle. Once you have the clevis and kingpin attached to the new spindle, you want to leave the hardware loose so that you can adjust the clevis and kingpin to line up with the mounting points on the front axle. Once you have everything lined up, you're going to secure it in place with the original hardware that we removed earlier in the process. Now that you have the spindle attached to the front axle, you want to go ahead and reinstall the tie rod end to the spindle and secure it in place using the factory hardware removed earlier in the process. Once your spindle is attached and all of your hardware is loosely installed, you want to go back through and tighten down all of the hardware. Once you've tightened all of the hardware, the next thing we're going to do is to reinstall the factory hub onto the spindle. We're going to attach the hub using the factory hardware that we removed earlier on in the process. Now the last thing we need to do before moving over to the other side is to properly grease our new front spindle. Once you've properly greased your new spindle, you want to be sure to wipe away any excess grease away from the fitting. After that, you're ready to move over to the other side and repeat the steps for installing your other spindle. 
Now the next step that we're going to show you is only going to be necessary if once you put the card on the ground you have too much negative camber. Installing the camber plate will give you the positive camber that you need. Now in order to install the camber plate, what you're going to do is to remove and discard the four bolts that are securing the lower plate to the leaf spring. And once you do this, we'll show you how to install the camber plate. Once you have your lower plate removed, you're going to take the camber plate, flex the leaf spring down so that you can get your camber plate in. You're going to want to install it with the flat portion towards the bottom so it rests onto the leaf spring. Slide it in between the upper plate and the leaf spring. And then you'll reinstall the lower plate with the supplied mounting hardware. Again, this will give you the positive camber that you need. Now, all depending on how your cart sits, once you put it on the ground, will depend on whether or not you need to install the camber plate. Now, the last step before we lower our cart back onto the ground is to install our new wheels and tires. Once you have your wheels and tires installed on the cart, you can then safely lift your cart and remove the jack stands. Once the jack stands are out of the way, you can lower the cart back onto the ground. Once the cart's on the ground, we can then move on to installing our rear lift kit. Now unlike the front, you want to leave the jack in position underneath the rear axle to help support the axle during the installation of the lift kit. Once you have that in place, we want to go ahead and remove our factory wheels and tires, and we can go ahead and discard them as we will not be reinstalling them. Our first step is to remove the nut securing the rear shock in place. Once removed, we're going to want to retain this hardware as it will be reused to reinstall the shock later on in the process. After this, we're going to want to remove the nut securing the U-bolts in place. However, this hardware can be discarded as it will not be reused. Now it's important to note that when working on the rear of the cart, you only want to do one side at a time as the leaf spring is the only thing supporting the rear axle. So if you remove both leaf springs, you're going to have a rear axle that's free floating and we don't want that. Now you may need to go over to the other side and loosen the bolts securing the U-bolt in place but you don't want to completely remove them. Now this may be just so you can get enough clearance so that you can flip the leaf spring on top of the axle. Now the next thing we're gonna do is to remove the shackle bolt and the pivot bolt securing our leaf spring in place. Once removed, we're gonna remove the leaf spring. However, we're gonna retain the leaf spring and the hardware that secures it in place. Now before we drop the axle, the first thing you wanna do is to release the clip that's holding the brake line in place. If you don't do this, the brake line will have too much tension on it, which won't allow you to lower the axle far enough to get your block and your leaf spring position. Now once you have the clip out, you're going to want to hang on to it as we're going to reinstall it later to get our brake cable back into position. Now this time we can lower the axle so that we have enough room to install our lift block and position the leaf spring on top of the axle. Now at this time, we're going to go ahead and install the rear lift block into the cradle on the axle. Now you want to make sure that the block has the slope facing downward towards the front of the cart. Once the lift block is in place, we're going to reinstall our leaf spring by aligning the centering pin with the hole on the lift block. We're then going to line up the two mounting locations with the rear shackle and the front pivot and reinstall the factory hardware. Once the leaf spring is in place, you want to go ahead and leave the hardware loose at this time. The next thing we're going to do is install the small nut and bolt into our centering plate. Next we're going to install the mounting plate on top of the leaf spring. Now this center hole is going to line up with the centering pin on top of the leaf spring. This furthest hole is going to line up with the factory rear shock. 
Once you've done that, you can take the swing perch and line up the two holes on the swing perch with the bolts that we've just installed. And then we're gonna place a flat washer and lock nut included from the hardware kit underneath of the swing perch plate. Now you wanna make sure that you leave your hardware loose so that we can slide our centering plate in between the swing perch and the mounting cradle on the rear axle. You want the nut on the centering plate to go into the swing perch and the bolt head to go into the hole that's on the bottom of the cradle. Once the centering plate is in place, the next thing we wanna do is attach our shock to the top mounting bracket. And we're gonna do this using the factory hardware that we removed earlier in the process. With the shock now attached to our mounting plate, that completes the installation for one side of the cart. Now we wanna make sure we leave all the hardware loose on this side so that we can move over to the other side and repeat the process. Now the reason for leaving all the hardware loose is it will make installing the other side a lot easier. Now we just wanted to take a minute before we continue on to note that one or more of your bolts securing your leaf spring in place may be seized. If this is the case, you're going to have to cut the bolt out in order to remove it. If you have to do this, you'll have to replace the bolt and possibly the bushing and the inner sleeve. Now we've already had to go ahead and do this for this leaf spring, but we just wanted to go ahead and make note of it at this time. Once you have all hardware loosely installed on both sides, you can then go back and tighten all of your hardware. Now while tightening the hardware, you also want to make sure that you keep all of your centering pins lined up. For example, the centering pin on the leaf spring with the mounting hole on your lift block. Make sure everything stays aligned while you tighten the hardware. Once all of your hardware is tight on one side, you want to move over to the other side of the cart and tighten all of your hardware there. Now that we have all of the components and hardware for our rear lift installed, we're ready to install our wheels and tires. After the wheels and tires have been installed, we can lift up the rear end, remove our jack stands, and then safely put our cart back on the ground. Now at this time we want to show you how to properly adjust your toe so that you have the correct alignment for your cart. Now the first thing you need to do is to measure from the center of each tire on the front and the center of each tire on the rear. Once you have your measurements, you want to make sure that the rear is about an eighth inch wider than the front measurement. Now in order to adjust this, you need to loosen the jam nut on the tie rod end and then you adjust your tie rod end 
accordingly. Now that we have the measurements, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the jam nuts so that we can lengthen or shorten our tie rod end so that we can get the proper measurements for our toe. Now once you've made adjustments on the tie rod end, you wanna go back and take measurements a second time and you're gonna repeat this process until you have the proper toe measurements. Once you have these measurements correct, be sure to go back and tighten your jam nuts. Now the last thing you wanna do is to go back and double check that everything has been installed correctly and that you didn't skip over any steps. You also wanna double check and make sure that all of your hardware is tight and secure. Once you've done this, that'll complete the installation of our lift kit, part number LIFT109 on this 2010 Club Car DS. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.